It is Tuesday. Yesterday I did a very easy 5k, like super slow, not even worrying about hitting my easy pace. Went even slower than that, I think about some of the run was in, like zone one, which is unheard of for me really, but legs are quite sore. So it's just about ticking over, looking after yourself. Today is a similar thing, five miles, very easy today. Um, Tuesdays is normally a speed workout, but I'm just gonna injure myself if I do that today. And my marathon training plan starts next week. That would be a very stupid thing to do. So sometimes you've got to swallow the ego and just take it easy, which is what I'm doing. So as well as the metric half uh, on Sunday, there was another event on Friday, which was my son's sports day. So it's the first time we've been invited to his sports day because for it's his third year at school and for the first two years we weren't allowed to attend sports day. Guess what? Because of COVID. And of course, well, I don't know if you all of you know about sports day, but I think with sports day is see all the children have all their races, hurdles, sack race. 100 meter sprint, 50 meter sprint, etc. But there's also the mums and dads race, or well, now it's called the parent and carers race. It's the first time I've ever been faced with the dreaded race. And obviously, now I'm a runner, I thought to myself, I wasn't dreading it like. I normally would be. Well, before I'd started running, I probably wouldn't have even entered it. I don't know, maybe I would have done. I probably would have feigned an injury on the day. Um, as my, my dad used to do the dad's race, he would come. I'm just gonna walk this bit, it's a hill. He would come dead last. <laughs> and I don't remember this, but he told me the other day, he said, he came dead last and I, made excuses for him that he had a bad back, which to be fair, he did. That wasn't the reason he came last, because he was very much like, as I was, sedentary office job all day, no exercise, no interest in sport, or anything like that. So I'm just gonna walk for a bit. My legs are really quite sore today. Let's just have a walk and have a chat, okay. Anyway, I, I digress slightly. So, get up to the start line, look at the dads, and I think, okay, and the silly thing is, <laughs> I wore my running gear to sports day. I wore sort of fairly incognito, so plain blue shirt rather than anything with like Ron Hill all over it or whatever. Um, I wore my old Brooks shoes that I've officially retired now but I still wear them like normally, just out and about. So anyway, the race goes, there's eight of us. I set off thinking, do you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna win this. I know I'm not gonna win it because I'm not the fastest runner, but you know, I run what, 25 miles a week now. I'm gonna be probably all right, top three. I end up being fifth out of eight. I cross the line, I see one guy behind me and that's it. It turned out another guy, about halfway down, he stopped clutching his leg, so presumably he pulled a muscle or something. And I came away feeling really deflated, which I know is stupid because it's just a stupid Father's Day race. But the thing you'll find with running, I'm not crying, I've just got a snotty nose. Um, thing with running 
is as soon as you put yourself out there, you come out of your comfort zone and you immediately expose yourself. And ultimately, although I run a lot, I'm still a 41 year old who's overweight. <laughs> and yeah, some of these dads were super quick. They sprinted off, but again, yeah, I'm not a sprinter. I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a long distance runner. And the thing is, you don't know. Like, you know, my assumption was that all the dads there were, you know, couch potatoes. Like I wasn't, they probably weren't. At the end of the day, that the fact that they are getting up there to enter the race, they are obviously, I'm gonna run for a bit now. They are obviously got a level of fitness. Otherwise, they would probably just laugh it off for a lot of that afternoon. I was actually quite deflated and felt a bit rubbish about myself, which is really bad. And, you know, I said to my son, before we started, you know, it doesn't matter where you come, you know, just do your best and enjoy yourself. And, you know, he didn't do particularly well at the races. He was sort of second or third from last, like me. <laughs> Actually, once, once they had finished, and he came over to me, he went, wow, dad, you came fifth. Yeah, that's amazing. And I thought to myself, he's saying that because that's what I've taught him. So I need to practice what I preach, don't I really? But it can be hard sometimes, you know? It's the same, and uh, I wanna do a video about this to be honest, because my issue with park run is that, you know, it's not a race, but the first thing you get when you get your result is telling you what position you were. Well, why do you need to know that if it's not a race? You know, you have to remember these things, right? That the second that you lace up your shoes and you go on that start line, whether it's dad's race, park run, 5k, 10k, marathon, half marathon, ultra, before you even set one foot over the start line, the fact you've laced up your shoes and you're there, you are above average. You can run a marathon and you can be the slowest runner. You can be this last one round, dead last. You then go into, say, my office at work, like 250 people, hands up who's run a marathon. How many people do you think would put their hand up? I would say probably 20 at maximum. So who's last now? This is it, you know? We have to put these things in perspective that, all right, you might be last or you might be fifth, but you're fifth and last out of an exceptional group of people. You know, so what's the alternative? You just decide, well, I don't want to be last. I don't want to be fifth. So I'm going to not bother anymore. I'm going to sit on the sofa. I'm going to pretend to my son that I've got an injury so I don't have to not be first or third or second. That's how I've lived my life for years. Avoidance. You know, you can't be disappointed if you don't try. That is not me anymore. I'm not that person. I'm not the one to avoid doing things because I'm worried about failing. I've got three choices for next year. Either I don't go or I don't I go to sports day and I don't race. Pain and injury. I just step up as I am and don't worry about it. And just show my son it's the taking part that counts. Or at least the sprint training and try and do better. Now knowing me, it'll probably be the last one. With the caveat that I can't be disappointed in myself. Right, anyway, sorry, that got quite deep, didn't it? I do apologize. I do actually want to do a, a proper dedicated video to that because I think it's really important. And I think it's something that we talk about enough. I've seen, you know, fast YouTubers go into elite races and they come really far behind. But you know, to 
keep pushing yourself. You're never going to get better if you are just the top of your current group. Now I could go back to even if I only ever ran one 5k a week, I would be probably fitter than 95% of my friends. So I could just stay in that group and feel, you know, I was the fittest in that group. That made me feel good, but no, I want to go out there. I want to go to social events. I want to go to running events. And I want to see these inspirational, amazing, fast people. And I want to do my own thing. And I want to be better. Every day, every week, every time your feet hit that pavement, you're becoming a better version of yourself. And that's all that I need to worry about. Not about some stupid Father's Day race with people that are probably half my age <laughs> and could be super fit athletes, you never know. So my assumption was they would all be like I used to be, but in reality, as I said, if they were like that, if I had Father's Day race when I was that unfit, I probably just wouldn't have raced it. Two miles in, legs are feeling a bit better now. I have no idea where I'm going, I'm just randomly walking around the streets. That are, well, I know where I'm going, but in terms of my route, I've no idea how these five miles are going to pan out. Just randomly wandering around, trying to find quiet streets and avoiding people giving me funny looks. And I'm filming. Well, I think that's probably enough rambling from me for now. I will go and finish my run. Tomorrow is Wednesday, so that'll be rest day. Thursday I might do a long run. See if we can get that Strava June half marathon badge. If we're feeling all right. If I'm, fe if I'm feeling all right, I should say. I'm gonna get on with it because my pace is lagging massively behind because I'm just prattling on, not actually doing anything. Prattling on and not focusing on the task in hand. So, check back in with you either Thursday or Friday. Late as gators, it's Friday. And that means long run day. I'm not gonna film too much today because I had a big old rant on Tuesday. Not a rant, but you know. I did a lot of talking on Tuesday's run, which is kind of unexpected really, so I don't wanna bore you all and have a half an hour long video. So, and I've got much to say really today. I left you on Tuesday having done five, only five and a bit miles in the end. Um, yesterday, Thursday, I did seven miles. Was supposed to do five, but I was enjoying myself. And today I'm gonna to do 10, which will bring my mileage to around 26 miles for the week. So that's a pretty average week, really. Next week, marathon training starts by Chelmsford Half Marathon. So, ironically, my mileage is actually going to be cut by about 10 miles. I did, I've had several thoughts about, you know, if you've got a marathon training plan and the mileage of, say, the first four or five weeks is less than you normally run, should you stick to that plan and effectively reduce your mileage or should you just pick it up about mile four or five? Now, I've always been in two minds about that because from an ego point of view, it feels like you're going backwards if you reduce your mileage. But in some ways, I also think it's quite good to sort of reset your, reset the clock as it were. Not clock, I don't know, just reset everything. And I was watching the long run podcast the other day from 40 runs and that question was actually asked and they said, you know, got a training plan I'm already doing more mileage in the first few weeks what should I do and their suggestion was you should just start a week one reduce your mileage because it just helps reset everything so I've decided I'm going to do that so next week it's going to be a short week 
even though I raced on Sunday, I've pretty much gone back to a, a normal running week this week. Only difference is I just done all easy runs this week. So yeah, it'll be good to have a rest. A reduced week for the next few weeks. The highest mileage week on the planet is 40 miles, so that's not. That's only about seven miles more than I've done in a week previously. But we'll see. So what pace am I going for for Chelmsford? Well, I'm gonna do a separate video about that because there's a few techniques that you can use to calculate your race pace and I think it could be of interest to some people and good to get your thoughts on my planned pace and what you think. Nearly two miles in. Legs are still feeling a bit sore from Sunday. Only very slightly now. But I'll be alright after another mile or so. Probably not going to run this weekend. I've got quite a few bits on. I have ordered some new shoes. Some sexy ones. Which are not technically support shoes, but I have been reliably informed that they are alright for support wearers for race shoes. But I will say no more until they arrive and I'll have had my maiden run in them. Speaking of shoes, I um, had someone ask me about doing a review of the Stockany Guide 15s. Kit reviews isn't really what I plan to do on this channel, but if you want to know my opinion of them, I will give that, I will do a little video about that fairly soon. I wouldn't necessarily call it a review, but my thoughts on the Guide 15. Overall, thoughts positive. But I will check back in with you. But yeah, wait for the video. Sorry, I can't remember your name. You asked me on Strava. Ali, I think. So yes, video's coming soon. I've almost done 50 miles in them. So I think, in fact, by the end of this run, I will have, I think. So I think that's a good number to have an idea of what's going on with them. I don't think I've really got much to say, guys, today. I think I said it all on Tuesday. So I'm going to head out. If you're racing this weekend, or if you raced weekend just gone, because I'll be posting this video up on Monday. Hope it did well. Let me know how you got on, and let me know what you're training for at the moment. All right. See you later, guys. Take care.